Nessa girl, it is Monday morning and I am proud to report that a bitch is feeling good. Like sometimes when I get missing y'all, I don't know what be going on, but I will say this. It feels good when I wake up and I actually want to be in front of the camera because then I can come to y'all with the shits. I've been missing y'all. And I'm with the shit this morning and all this week, I'm with the shit. So let's just get right on into it. Now, I know I missed about two episodes of The Real Housewives of Patanka, but quiet as it's kept, they really ain't been giving much anyway. This season finale ain't give a whole lot anyway. But me and my home girl was already talking like this reunion was going to be everything because that's when shit going to hit ahead. I will say this. Real Housewives of Potomac ended at the right time. Actually, it ended two episodes too late because the shit been started dragging or whatever the case may be. But let's go ahead and break down this episode. I mean, this season finale episode. First and foremost. That pizza situation, them leaving that pizza at Cameron's supposed door is messy as fuck. What's even more messy is the fact that Cameron didn't realize she had ants, roaches, and flies on her front door in the morning because the bitch don't live there. Okay, Mr. Fletcher do not live here. Okay, that's number one. Chris and Candace in that conversation, that conversation they had about them kids. Chris... I'm glad that your two youngest kids are going to get to come participate in the wedding. Um, Chris, come hell or high water, you got to make it right with your other child. And I know Candace talked about Chris not wanting to feel rejection and Chris not wanting to feel this, that, and the third. I think Chris needs to hurry up and go to counseling because in this situation, he's going to have to mentally and emotionally be strong enough to endure a lot of um a lot of doubt a lot of skepticism a lot of cynicism as a child regardless of the circumstance that child is forever going to feel abandoned by chris angry at chris and chris is going to have to be whole enough to take all that bad energy and bad juju and endure it for a while until that boy can heal from the situation but chris you need to do that sooner than later and honestly as a parent you need to throw yourself in front of the bullet bite the bullet get hit by the train and understand that it is your job to sacrifice your well-being for the betterment of that child and you gonna need to do that quick fast and in a hurry and i could have told you that for free and why candace mama around there meddling all in y'all business and paying all y'all bills she need to be helping you in the one area she can which is counseling okay Hell, you got a free counselor laying up in your shit. She probably laying in the bed with you and Candace, quiet as it's kept, coaching Candace on how to take brown dick. But I'm not going to get started on Monday. Um, Karen eating breakfast with Ray. Chad, let me tell you something, Karen. You were so emotionally non-attached to that breakfast to that table you were sitting at, to the utensils that y'all was using, that it honestly felt like you and Ray were like having breakfast at a at a at a at a at a breakfast and uh, uh, what do you call it uh, when you an uh, inn like a breakfast inn, breakfast hotel inn. Something felt real continental breakfast, you know, like fake about what was going on. I'm sorry, Karen. Like your house just don't look lived in you know what i'm saying like it it just it don't look lived in um i'm looking around my house right now you know it's a gatorade bottle a empty peanut butter bottle um some toilet some uh, clorox cleanup an empty wine bottle i mean just signs that people actually live here it's a whole thing of toilet paper down there on the floor i need to put up in the cabinet and I understand we try to clean our house up and prep before the cameras and stuff come on, but it's just certain things you can't fake. And Karen, y'all don't, that house don't look lived in. It just don't. It don't. Um, Ashley going to therapy. Ashley, I love the fact that you do go to therapy. I just question, do you listen to what the fuck going on down to the therapy? Okay. 
Um, think about it. What is a man trying to tell you? Maybe flowers mean we should just be friends. If you get my drift, hang. If you can hang, no pain, no gain. Y'all can go ahead and sing the rest on your morning commute. Nevertheless, Ashley, it didn't take no therapist. Like, Ashley, it almost feel like you're going to go ask 18 people about Michael having or not wanting to have babies with you in hopes that the 19th person will say what you want to hear and you'll disregard all the clues you've been getting from the previous 18 people. Ashley, what more do you need? And I get it. You know, we've all been in situations where you just want to believe the best and you want to hold out hope, this, that, and the third. But think about it, girl. What is Michael trying to tell you? He doesn't want to have kids with you, Ashley. All right. He hired, he hired you. He married you. He hired you to be a trophy wife. I mean, this just isn't new. It just isn't like this is like your marriage to Michael is one of the oldest white man plays in the book, sis. And Ashley, quiet as it's kept, you know what you signed up for. Like, I don't understand why y'all girls go out and get these rich men you know, and then you think that after you get them and marry them, that you're going to then activate your plan and like your magic pussy and your youthful head is going to, you know, make this man come around and be what it is you mapped out in the back of your mind that you never shared with him. Actually, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Michael did not make it as far in business as he did being stupid and not having contingency plans, number one. Number two, that man's worked very hard to amass what he's got and he damn sure ain't finna let it uh, go to hell by the oldest trick in the book, which is get married, have a baby, and let the bitch take half and be all up in your pocket for the rest of the damn life. And you stuck taking care of her because you're taking care of the kid. That's like the oldest female trick in the damn book. Michael ain't here for it, sis. Um, Ashley, if I was you, I would find Shiny O'Neill phone number. Matter of fact, DM me and I give it to you. I got it if it's still the same. And I would call Shawnee and just ask her all about siphoning and funneling off that man money, putting it all in your mama name and stuff. I would enjoy and rack up as many jewels, diamonds, businesses, cash, bags, vacations, bags, cars, bags. I would rack up as much his mama old silverware, her old jewelry. I would rack up as much shit as I can from Michael between uh, now and the time I turn 33. And then, bitch, I would just leave and then go find me somebody that want to have a baby with me. That's my damn age on his dime. And it's a win-win situation for you, mama. You need to listen. You got time with this baby, mama. That's the short play. The baby is the short play. Worst case scenario, mama, you could freeze them goddamn eggs and have one at 63 like Janet did, okay? I'm on a roll in control like Janet, damn it. Rat to the funk, Benny, and they can't handle it. Why? Because I'm so funk. Never mind. Stay on task, Q. ADD, stay on task. Nevertheless, you got time to start talking about pushing our babies, bitch. I be tussy rolling and fool our lives so deep on that motherfucker money, he wouldn't know what hit him. You think the joke is on me, bitch? The joke gonna be on you when you check them account balances when I turn 34, bitch. Okay, moving right along. Let me pull up these notes and see what the fuck going on. That Why am I talking so ghetto this morning? Y'all, I got a mental problem. I, it, I'm really starting to think it's like four people living in here. Robin and Juan at their birthday party. Juan, um, you know, there really isn't much to say other than Juan and his father look exactly alike. And it is deathly scary how somebody can adopt, I guess, how mannerisms can be passed down biologically. We always assume that the way people move, their swag, their personality is more by, you know, the way they were socialized, the things they seen. But Juan and that man, they act, they move, they react. They have the same gestures, the same smile triggers. Like, it's just 
really weird and I'm glad to see that they were able to seamlessly come together in their adult years and make this one big happy family situation happen. Um, you know, Candace, when she was getting her makeup done in the kitchen, her mother and herself and Ronnie walked in, the mom's new husband. Um, and to know that he's been with the mom since Candace was five years old, I'm just really baffled with how the mama have so much time to be all up in Candace mix and she got a whole husband. Moreover, I'm surprised that the husband is not more outwardly annoyed by how engaged Candace's mom is in her life. You know, most men, most dads be like, you know, brother, leave them kids alone. Bring your ass on out of here. Stay out of their business. You know, that's kind of the dynamic I'm used to seeing in the black household when the mama doing too much. But it just seemed like, I mean, quiet as a skeptic, it seemed like Ronnie might be just as damn bad as the damn mama. It was something about Ronnie that just eh, didn't sit too well with me. But we're going to let that ride. Um, Michael not giving Ashley a straight answer about them kids in their kitchen. Ashley, you keep losing this game of poker because you keep allowing Michael to pull your whole card. Honestly and truthfully, Michael is trying to pull your bluff. And he's at the point where he can't take or leave you. Again, principle of least interest. The person with the least interest in the relationship has the most power. Michael is at the point where it's like, if you were to say, well, children for me is a non-negotiable, it's a deal breaker and I'm out. Michael's gonna look at your ass and be like, cool, let me drop the paperwork. And he knows this. That's why he keeps, you know, prompting you to be like, what you gonna do? And then you double down, which further lets him know that he's got you and that the money and the lifestyle is enough and that's all he's got to do. This chess move that he played with you is just so classic and I really just wish that the older women around you spent less time hating on your youthfulness and what you had going on and that you would have came into the picture a little better than what you did so they could have schooled you, mama. Because right now you really need a old lady sitting under a tree to call you over and school you, Ashley. Um, you know, now Karen might got a man that ain't worth having, bitch, but she got him, okay? He seemed to be all, he might not be into it, but he's into the front. Michael ain't even into the damn front, girl. Um, that engagement party, Chris with them napkins. Chris, that was a very sentimental gift. I liked it. Um, the napkins was smooth, but well, let's talk about what isn't. Michael trying to slide over to Ray and get the tea. Michael, that was like the most abrupt, like, assault. And Ray was basically like, bitch, if you don't get your crazy white ass the fuck from around me with this, uh, Ray was not here for your bullshit, Michael. And it was damn hilarious. And last but not least, they had not got the fussing down to that engagement party. Now, Karen, you keep calling Ashley a liar. But much like Ashley said, what am I lying about? And Karen is, is unable to ever say. Nevertheless, the argument was tired. The, 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 the season finale was anticlimactic. Karen, I mean, yeah, you really finna look stupid on this reunion. You better have some lie. And I'm sure Karen's gonna have something to say like, you know, well, honey, when you live in a house this big, we have cleaning people that come. Obviously, the maid threw the pizza out. When she, <coughs> when she let herself in that morning, obviously one of my cleaning people, my yard maintenance people, I don't know, who keeps boxes on their porch of half eaten pizza? Of course I wouldn't know about it. I don't know everything my maid picks up, do you? Karen gonna have some fabulous, luxurious ass story, but it really feel like it's all about to come to a head at this reunion, because when you see the previews, it looked like Karen, she finally broke. And Karen gonna pull, I'm telling y'all now, she's gonna pull the Kim Zosiac card that everybody is ganging up on her, but that's not what it is. It's just that everybody see through Karen lies. Anyway, y'all, that's the Real Housewives of Patanka. I mean, it was given what it was given. The more important thing is that it's Monday morning. I'm here with y'all. I'm in good spirits. I'm in good health. And we're gonna have a good week. Nessa, girl, I will talk to you a little later. Bye.